When we return, is this strange formation discovered in Turkish mountains the remains of Noah's Ark? I was skeptical, but I was convinced that the Ark is here. Our investigators reveal the startling evidence that may solve one of the world's great mysteries next. Archaeologists have been searching for Noah's Ark for generations. But so far, all they've uncovered are a few dubious artifacts and a number of unproven legends. But high on the top of a mountain in Turkey, a new expedition is convinced that they're getting close. The expedition's leaders believe they are on the edge of one of the most important archaeological discoveries of all time. In just a few months, archaeologists in eastern Turkey will begin digging for Noah's Ark. 17 miles from the legendary Mount Ararat on the El Judi mountain, the object believed to be the Ark appeared literally overnight. Some called its appearance an act of God. In 1948, there was an earthquake in the middle of the night. The next morning they looked out and here is the whole side of this mountain, this meadow had caved in. That was the very hour that David Ben-Gurion declared the establishment or re-establishment of the state of Israel. May 15, 1948. If you believe the Bible story of the flood, uh, then uh, it could have significance. If you don't believe any of it, it doesn't mean anything. Although local villagers quickly discovered a huge boat-shaped object, it was years before this military surveillance photo brought it to the world's attention. Years later, an American team came to investigate, and they in turn called archaeologist Vendel Jones. Jones was the inspiration for the movie character Indiana Jones. When uh, I was invited to come to Turkey uh, to give my opinion about what they thought was Noah's Ark, I was skeptical. But uh, after being there and reading the historical sources from a textual point of view, uh, I was convinced that the Ark is here. For Jones, the evidence was overwhelming. Ground-penetrating radar clearly showed a structure below the surface that was shaped like the hull of a ship, and its size almost exactly matched the huge dimensions described in the Bible. Realize that the size of this boat is larger than the Queen Mary or any passenger ship that we had in the world until they started building aircraft carriers and oil tankers. But how could an Old Testament mariner have steered such a gigantic ship? A dozen carved stones found on the mountainside provided the answer. Jones believes they are ancient anchors that Noah hung over the sides of the boat. The drag of the, these large stones in the water would make the ark turn, so they actually could control the direction of the ark uh, with these stones. Another clue suggested how the ark might have been constructed. They even found iron on the surface that looked just like a rock. When you pick it up, you could tell it was baling wire that had been bound together and used for pins or for uh, hinges or for braces. The surface evidence is tantalizing, but couldn't this boat-like object just be some freakish trick of nature? I would think that the possibility of this formation being uh, a product of nature would be virtually one chance in a hundred billion, but it's not for certain until you actually get the diggers in and you begin to sift that dirt and analyze what you have almost spoonful by spoonful. That is the proof. Excavations are scheduled for summer of 95. Jones knows that no matter what turns up, some critics will never believe that it's Noah's Ark, but he doesn't care. And it's gonna be hard for those people to eat crow and say, well, we're wrong. They're not, they're not going to accept it, even if they found uh, a bronze plaque, say, manufactured by Tubal Cain Noah Incorporated, uh, they still wouldn't accept it. Encounters will be right back.